Hello and welcome to FPL Mates, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2023-24 season. My name is Dan and it's time for the first of two uploads today. We are going to be covering all of the press conferences and injury news that we found out today and yesterday. And believe me, there is a lot of information to go around here. And there's also going to be a wildcard draft in this video as well as talks about captaincy, midfield replacements and much, much more. So guys, if you enjoy this one, drop a like, subscribe if you're new around here. Let's get going. So much to talk about. So starting off with the press conferences, we're going to go through all teams alphabetically, starting off with Arsenal and Thomas Partey will return to the Game Week 27 squad for Arsenal against Sheffield United this week. So a big, big boost for Arsenal. If you thought their defence was good already, it's going to be even better now. Jesus is also ready to start. He wasn't risked last game week, but he was technically ready last game week as well. So we expect him back in the starting 11 this week. And Zinchenko and Tom Tomiyasu might be available, but it's going to be a late call on both of these players. Unsure if they're going to play or not. A couple more sessions to go before a decision will be made on the Arsenal uh, defenders there. For Aston Villa, Conta and Paul Torres are available. They are available, but they may not start. It's going to be a case of whether Emery wants to risk them against Luton Town or not, but they are available and they are expected to be in the squad at least. Durant is expected back in game week 28 and Diego Carlos is still out. For Bournemouth, here's the big one. Solanke is going to have a late assessment, so not even the man Manager Iriola knows if Solanke is going to be ready or not for this weekend. But the initial injury fears, well, it's not as bad as expected. And he's looking very, very good for game week 28 still. If, you, so if you're holding on to Solanke, hoping he is going to play in game week 28 for that double game week, then I think you are going to be in luck there at the very least. This game week is kind of a 50-50 coin toss. So guys, do not sell Solanke. Try and bench him if you can. Uh, if not, I think he's okay to start. Take that risk to see if he can play this game week against Burnley. Unal is going to be available. Aaron's, Adams, Fredericks and Kelly are still out, however, for Bournemouth. For Brentford, me is out for the season. He has picked up a pretty serious ankle injury there. Pinnock and Hickey are still out as well. So really, Brentford's defence is completely shot at the moment. Their whole for first, uh, like back line, their first choice back line, all of those players are unavailable if you include Rico Henry there as well. And Burmo could be back in game week 30, but again, he is going to be out for Brentford this week. So a lot of, particularly in defence, uh, defensive injury problems for Brentford. For Brighton, Ferguson, Lamptey and Veltman are available after recent scares. So that's going to be a little boost there for Brighton. However, they do still have a lot of injury problems. Jao Pedro, Hinshelwood, Milner and Mitoma now as well are all going to be out uh, this game week and possibly beyond as well. Gilmore also serves the penultimate game of his suspension. So no Gilmore there either. So Brighton, lots of players missing. For Burnley, Bayer is progressing well, but we didn't actually get a return date from him. Company keeping his uh, cards close to his chest maybe there. Costa, uh, Foster, Colliosho, Ramsey and Redmond, however, are still going to be out. For Chelsea, Kukurea and Silva have returned to training and they are going to be available this game week for Chelsea. And there are no other injury uh, returnees for Chelsea. So uh, yeah, anyone else who was out previously and Kunku, Reese James and the like, they're all, all still going to be out. For Crystal Palace, Eze and Hughes will be back in the squad. Eze in particular is going to be a huge boost for Crystal Palace, a really nice returnee there. And when he can get himself some minutes, I think he's actually a player who we all want to have a close look at. Only 6 million at the moment, uh, Eberechi Eze. Very, very nice indeed. Uh, Anderson is available after an injury scare in the midweek as well. Uh, and Decore, Gehi and Elise, they are all still going to be out and unavailable for Palace. For Everton, Gehi uh, and Onana will both have late uh, assessments uh, in the midfield for Everton. So not sure if they're going to be available or not, but there is a chance. Gomez is back on grass, but he's not going to be ready. And Dan Juma and Delhi are still out. For Fulham, Pelina serves the final game of his suspension. Jimenez is still out, but William is back and available after uh, a rest uh, in the week. So next up, Liverpool. Here is the big news from Liverpool. Salah, he is not going to be available for this game week. So all of the people have been transferring uh, Salah in over the last couple of game weeks. Real, real bad news for you there. Uh, he's just not going to be playing this game week. He's going to be back against Man City in game week 28 at the very earliest. And then after that, game week 29, he blanks anyway. So Salah, for me, is, is got to probably got to be a sell, with, you know, maximum of one game in the next three game weeks. And that one game is against Man City anyway. Not looking good for Salah at all in FPL terms, at least. Uh, Darwin and Shobazai have trained this week, so we could see a return for those guys. Uh, no definitive answers on them, but they are at least have trained from yesterday. Robertson has 
return from illness as well. So he is going to be training today as well. For Luton Town, Adebayo, Lokia, Lokonga, Nakamba, uh, Anderson as well, all still out. Osho and Potts are now injured as well. And even Bell picked up a, an issue. He's going to have a late assessment. Not sure if he's going to be available. So Luton Town, another team with huge injury problems this week. They face Aston Villa this week. If you're an Ollie Watkins owner, maybe uh, a Bailey or a uh, Douglas Louise owner, then they may be able to take advantage of this Luton Town team that is not looking in such great shape at the moment. For Man City, uh, Jack Grealish has picked up a groin injury in the week. Uh, Guardiol is closer to a return, but we're not really sure if he is going to be available or not. I don't think he is, to be honest. And everyone else is available. So pretty good for Man City. It's just Grealish who is the big uh, absentee this game week. For Manchester United, Fernandes and Varane are ready and available. They had uh, injury scares as well, but they are actually going to be absolutely fine for Manchester United. Maguire is presumably still unavailable as well. And we've got the likes of Hoyland, Shaw, Martinez, Wambasaka, and Mason Mount all still out for the Red Devils. For Newcastle, Isaac and Willock, they returned to the matchday squad last game week with Isaac actually getting uh, 60, 67 minutes, something like that, under his belt. Willock uh, with a few minutes there. So I think Isaac and Willock, they're going to be ready to go, you know, in much better shape for this game week. Dubravka, uh, I did actually say in a, a video, I believe it might have been on Monday, I said Dubravka had been, maybe been dropped or rotated. It was just illness. So I did want to just reiterate, guys. I, I said it in yesterday's video as well. But Dubravka, he wasn't dropped. He's not injured. He was just ill and he is going to return to the starting 11 you would imagine in game week 27 so uh, yeah Dubravka only ill not necessarily out for any other reason target however uh he's back in training but game week 27 is going to be too soon for him for Nottingham Forest Bolly Sangari and Wood are closer to returning they might have a chance of starting this game week and Aina and Tavares are still unavailable Sheffield United sees Bulldog and Brereton Diaz back in full training, so they could return to the Sheffield United squad. Archer, however, he is going to be out until game week 30, and Holgate, after a uh, red card, is suspended until game week 30, so he is going to be out as well. For Spurs, another piece of big news here, as Richarlison is out for two to four weeks. Two weeks is the absolute minimum. If he is out for, you know, maybe to three weeks, you know, that is going to be him out for game week 29. So if you are holding on to Richarlison, hoping that you would have a player playing in blank game week 29, unfortunately, it's bad news there for Richarlison because he will be out for quite some time. We probably imagine that Timo Werner or, uh, you know, maybe uh, ben, uh, Brennan Johnson could come in at the left wing position for Spurs with Hyun Son going as the central striker in this Spurs team. But Richarlison, bad news there. Pedro Porro, also bad news. He's not going to be available for game week 27, but game week 28, he could return uh, then. A doggy has trained, however, and has a chance of starting this week. So looking a little bit better for a doggy. Now for West Ham, Phillips returns after suspension. Creswell is returning from injury as well. However, Maxwell Cornet has picked up a hamstring injury and he's going to be out for a few weeks. And finally, Wolves. He Chan has picked up a hamstring injury. Yes, uh, we heard this bad news during the week. It is bad news. Indeed, he is going to be out for a few weeks. So it could be that if you can't cover him, he might be worth selling because we, we haven't exactly got a return date for him, but we know it's going to be weeks, which is not ideal. So yeah, He Chan, I know a lot of people picked him up last game week, myself included, but it's gone very, very badly, unfortunately. Uh, Cunha is still out as well. However, everyone else is available for Wolverhampton Wanderers. So, with all of that injury news, we need to start talking a little bit about some transfers. So, first of all, midfielder replacements. If you've got Huang Hee Chan, if you've got Richarlison, maybe you've got Salah, you're looking for a new midfielder. Who should you be going for right now? Well, I think the players fall into two categories. And it basically depends if you are planning on free hitting in game week 29 or wild carding before 30. We used a similar format last game week but depending on what your strategy is with your chips is gonna kind of change what kind of players you actually go for so if you are free hitting in gaming 29 or wild carding maybe in 28 or 29 potentially um then these are the kind of players you want to be looking at first of all Hyun Min Son playing as a central striker for at least a few weeks for Spurs that's gonna be very very nice for him on penalties as well and uh, hopefully he can get back up to the form that he showed before he was off at the Asian Cup after that Cole Palmer if you sold him recently definitely a player you want to look at bringing back in because he's got some nice fixtures against an injury-stricken Brentford team. And then Newcastle up next, the worst defence in the Premier League, as we know. Speaking of Newcastle, Gordon is definitely worth a shout as well. A nice longer-term option with a potential double game week in game week 34 for Newcastle, which could be nice. And Tavernier, uh, we, we haven't spoken about him in a while, but... 
If I'm going to go for a midfielder for Bournemouth, looking at that double game week in 28 and get the fixture against uh, Burnley this game week as well, maybe Tavernier is maybe the player to go for. 5.4 million, uh, a little cheap guy there. Of course, uh, if you haven't got Saka, then you can ignore all of these players just by Saka. But yeah, Son Palmer, Gordon, Tavernier, if you are free hitting in game week 29. If you are not, or you are you, know, you just want to make sure you have players ready for game week 29, you want to pick some players who have fixtures in game week 29, these are the kind of players you want to go for. So Son, once again, Madison, definitely worth a shout. We know how good he was at the, the front end of the season. If he can recapture some of that form, he's going to be a formidable FPL asset. We also got Douglas Luiz here, um, showed some uh, some uh, nice returns the last game week with two goals from open play. Doesn't do that very often, but hey, you take it when it happens. Uh, obviously, a game against Luton Town, who are injury stricken, is going to be very, very nice as well. And Jared Bowen, a hat-trick last game week, maybe a return to form from him, maybe a little bit too early to say but why not take the punt if you're looking for a game week 30 asset but I have to say guys these are the midfield replacements that I've picked out personally I actually think there are probably many more options to potentially go for as well midfield is an absolute gold mine at the moment with a lot of differentials you could potentially go for as well so I'm open to any other suggestions that you guys have for midfield replacements these are just the ones that I personally like that I would personally be looking at if I'm looking to replace maybe one of my midfielders we mentioned blank game week 29 very briefly briefly just then and I just wanted to throw this on screen just so we all have this uh, all in one place I guess and this week during the week after the FA Cup results we have got confirmation of the exact fixtures that will and will not take place during game week 29 so the only teams that will play in game week 29 are Aston Villa versus West Ham, Burnley versus Brentford, Fulham versus Spurs and Luton versus Nottingham Forest so if you only have a few players from these teams you have some big Big decisions to make. Are you going to be taking hits to try and build more of your players towards having a decent-ish team for Game Week 29? Or are you going to have to use a chip, a free hit, a wild card in order to get your squad ready for Game Week 29? It is going to be a rough one with so many teams not playing and in particular. So many teams that actually we really like the players from. We really like the players from Arsenal, Liverpool, Man City at the moment as well. But none of these teams are going to even play in game week 29. So that could cause you some problems at the moment. So be aware, no fixture for so many teams and the only few teams that will play, only eight teams are going to play. Uh, do not expect high scores in this game week, but you should try and prepare to at least try and get something from this game week. Going on from that, I wanted to throw this on screen. Uh, obviously, if you guys watched my, uh, my fixtures, double game weeks, blank game weeks and full chip strategy video from a, uh, from yesterday, they uploaded yesterday morning, you'll already know a little bit about this already. Yeah? And guys, if you are wanting to try and plan out some kind of chip strategy to navigate some of the blanks and double game weeks that are coming up, I really, really do recommend you go check out that video. It's about 30 minutes long and it will be one of the most valuable 30 minutes you spend on FPL all season watching that video. Believe me, there is some really nice research in there. Um, trust me, it took me a long time to build that video and hopefully it's going to benefit a lot of you. But just wanted to throw this on screen as well. Uh, these are my personal projected fixtures between now and the end of the season. Nothing here is locked in necessarily, but I think things are going to look roughly like this if the Premier League do go with the simplest possible solutions to, uh, you know, some of the, the fixture issues that they have coming up with games being unscheduled and, and stuff like that. Games having to move around uh, based on some predictions from the FA Cup as well and based on the fact that the Premier League wants to give fans as long notice as possible to give the fans when their fixtures are going to be. So I think the rest of the season is going to look a little bit like this. What I can tell you at the very least is game week 34 will most likely, like 99%, have double game weeks in it and it will possibly have some blanks in it as well. And game week 37 will be a big double game week no matter what. So those are the big pieces of information and we need to be you thinking about how we're going to use our chips uh, for this. But that is, uh, <laughs> that is a question for the video from yesterday. Now, some of you guys might be thinking about wildcarding right now, and I have to say, uh, I do not blame a lot of you. I think things have changed a lot recently, and a wildcard could very much be on the card. So let me share with you some of the kind of situations where you might want a wildcard in. And if this sounds like you, it might be ha worth having a serious think about hitting that wildcard button. So, is this you? You should think about wildcarding if you have less than five players from Aston Villa, Brentford, Burnley, 
Fulham, Luton, Forest, Spurs and West Ham. Of course, these are the eight teams who have a fixture in Game Week 29. If you have less than five players, you know, if maybe you only have two or three players from these teams, then you're going to have to navigate Game Week 29 somehow. That will either be a wild card or a free hit, but wild card is one of those two options. So, after that, think about these other criteria. Do you have less than two players from Bournemouth and Luton? Double game, uh, double, double game week 28 teams. Do you have, you know, just a Solanke maybe in your team? Maybe just a uh, Doughty in your team? You might be thinking about wildcarding if you want to uh, you, you want to really capitalise on next game week. Of course, you could also wait and use your wildcard next game week if that was the case as well. Which brings us to our next point. So, we've covered, you know, if, you, if, you're, if the only issue you have is issue number one, then you can maybe free here in 29. If you have issues both one and two, then maybe you can wildcard next game week. But if you have these last two issues, you might want a wild card right now. And that is if you have a few injured or doubtful players in your FPL team right now. So if you've got a Huang He Chan, a Salah, a Richarlison, a Pedro Porro, you know, if you've got these kind of players, I know a lot of people sometimes have like four or five injured players at the moment. There is a lot of injuries to popular players going around right now, including Solanke as well. So yeah, it could be problematic. And if you find yourself in that situation where you've been hit very hard, I've been very unfortunate, been very unlucky, you've been hit hard by injuries, then that is another reason to wildcard. And the final reason is if you have a few players in your team that you just kind of want to sell anyway, maybe you've been waiting for an excuse to sell these players. I'm talking players like Purvis and Stupinian, you've still got him kicking around. I know I have. Uh, maybe you've got Dubravka and Ariola as your goalkeeper combina combination and they're just not getting clean sheets and you're concerned a little bit about that. Maybe you've got some other players that you've just been holding on to for a while, but actually you kind of wish you never bought them. You really are looking for a reason to sell them, but maybe actually you've been forced to use your transfers in other areas, whether that's injuries or new double gaming players, but you've just got these players kicking around in your squad. You want to remove them anyway. Maybe a wild card can solve that issue as well. So if your wild card right now can solve all four of these issues for you, then actually it might be very well worthwhile just going for it and seeing what you can do over the next few game weeks. See if you can get a big boost in your FPL season. It's definitely possible if you still have that wild card in your back pocket. So what kind of team would we be looking at if we were to wildcard? Well, here is my Game Week 27 wildcard draft. And what we have is three double Game Week players for next Game Week, which is, I think, enough. I don't think you need more than three. And I think if you are picking up more than three Bournemouth and Luton Town players, well, these are the kind of players you're probably going to have to take hits to actually remove later on in the season. They're probably not players you want to own long term necessarily. So I think three is going to be enough for you. This team also has 10 blank Game Week 29 players before before you even make any transfers and bear in mind you will have two transfers to use in 28 and 29 to continue to work towards building a successful game week 29 team but this wildcard draft indeed already has 10 of those players so what i would probably recommend doing is rolling the transfer in game week 28 in game week 29 picking up just one new uh blank game week 29 player and then in game week 30 you can use your two transfers that you will have banked to start to I want to say fix your team because that's kind of what it will be. You will be looking to get some of the slightly more normal players back in your team. Pick up yourself a Salah. Get Palmer back into your team. Maybe double up on the Arsenal defence. That's the kind of thing that you'll be looking to do in Game Week 30 with your two transfers. So yes, guys, I think a Game Week 27 wildcard is definitely viable. And if you are going to do it under those specific circumstances, this is the team I would be going for. It costs 102.9 million. I think most people are probably roughly around that team value. That's probably about average right now, maybe slightly above average um, overall, but I know a lot of you guys are top, top FPL managers, and you'll have that nice team value. If you do need to get, downgrade some players, you know, you can maybe take Jared Bowen at 7.7 .7 down to someone slightly cheaper. You can maybe go for, uh, you know, uh, maybe a, a Bailey at Aston Villa. You go for a Kudus at West Ham, something like that. Or you can downgrade Matt Madison potentially there as well. So there are a couple of options still at your disposal. So there you go, guys. That is my Game Week 27 wildcard draft for you guys. Just going to read it out very quickly in totality for those of you guys listening on the audio. Flecken, Gabriel, Doughty, Adoggi, Son, Saka, Madison, Bowen, Douglas, Louise, Holland, Watkins, Neto, Solanke, Konsa, and Taylor on the bench. So there you go. Let's move on. Is it another game week where we all captain Erling Haaland? Well, I think it may well be. We are going to be doing an 100 experts video later where we're going to see the numbers for our experts, who they are captaining. But 
from what I know right now, I think Erling Haaland is just the best option. The obvious option, he is just the sensible option. You know, five goals in the midweek against Luton Town. He's back in form. Uh, De Bruyne is going to be playing as well, presumably as well. Uh, by the way, guys, anyone asking me about selling De Bruyne, I don't personally recommend it because I think Haaland and De Bruyne combining against Manchester United at home could go very, very big indeed. And that's why I'm going to recommend Haaland as your captain this game week. But there are a few other options if you are feeling brave. Son playing striker on penalties against Crystal Palace could be pretty nice indeed, couldn't it? As could Watkins against a Luton Town team that have a lot of injury problems at the moment. So yeah, I actually really like Son and Watkins as differential captains. There's definitely options outside of Haaland this week. And how about Saka maybe against Sheffield United? It seems very obvious, but actually I think I prefer all three of Haaland, Son and Watkins over Saka this game week, which might sound a little controversial with Saka's done so well recently, but I just see Haaland, Son and Watkins having that slightly higher ceiling this game week than Saka. Remember, Sheffield United, yes, they are a weak defence. They're a weak team, but they're not the weakest defence in the league. There's a lot of defences that uh, concede more goals, concede more chances than Sheffield United, particularly as it's an away game as well. So, yeah, just be aware of that. Expect returns from Saka, but I think you could expect just as many, if not more, from some of these other guys that we're speaking about here. So, there you go. Uh, those are your captain options. We'll maybe throw in Cole Palmer against Brentford as a little differential there as well. But here are the main options, and I'm looking forward to seeing what our experts choose as their captains. Is it going to be all about Haaland? Is there going to be some other differentials? We'll find out in the video later on today. And finally, let's quickly whiz through our goalkeeper start order. If you have a Raya or a Kelleher, fantastic. Play those players. Edison against Manchester United, I think, is worth uh, looking at as well for your goalkeeper this week, particularly as City have been in such good form defensively more recently. After that, Pickford, Neto, Vicario, Martinez, you might want to think about playing some of these players. Ariola and Dubravka have decent fixtures, but their defences are pretty weak, so you would be expecting uh, them to concede goals, so I've put them slightly lower on this list. And if you have a Kaminsky in your team right now, maybe in preparation for game week 28 and game week 29, well, I wouldn't look to play him this game week. That's all I'll say on that one. So those are your goalkeepers to start. Of course, in the deadline stream on Saturday, we will be covering all positions and your preferred start order, who should start, who should bench. That'll be on the bench list on this weekend's deadline stream as we always do. So hopefully see a few of you guys there. And that is our injury news and final decisions video all wrapped up. Guys, make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it, you found this helpful. Subscribe if you're new around here and particularly subscribe so you don't miss out on the video later on this afternoon or evening where we will be uploading the 100 experts video. Where we'll be looking at the final transfer moves, ship usage and captaincy and maybe some bonus questions in there as well among the top FPL managers. We'll be finding all of that out later on this evening. But until then, guys, thank you so much for watching. Once once again, don't forget to check out another video if you have the time and I will see you later, mates. Bye-bye.